we're starting to see some calls for freedom of speech to be curbed as a result of what are perceived as Islamophobic outbursts uh, worldwide, the latest case being uh, the innocence of Muslims. Well, I have a few thoughts on that. Um, and the first of them is um, the usual one that because of the self-imposed cocoon in which the Islamic world has lived for so long, where anything that is seen as disruptive or um, dangerous to social peace is immediately suppressed, um, they've lived so long that way that they have never developed any other way to deal with problems that could be disruptive, that could actually endanger social peace. The first response is always ban everything and call the police. I, now I'm not saying that that, that makes uh, Islamic society inherently totalitarian. That's not what I'm referring to. It's just that because the society generally agreed that there are things that simply are more important than, um, than freedoms, i.e. Uh, social peace, religion, that sort of thing, <clears throat> they've never really had all the challenges to uh, the power of the government or the power of anyone to suppress certain ideas. They've never actually dealt with that and they've always relied upon censorship. Well, due to the internet now, the, uh, the cocoon is being torn open whether they like it or not and they've the Islamic world has used suppression and um, blasphemy laws and things like that for so long that they simply have no answer to what is now happening. Um, and when you call upon people to censor certain things or to make uh, certain things hate speech or whatever, all that it ultimately does is it has the effect of um, increasing people's desire to publish all of this stuff. The internet is anarchy. Um, we know that Holocaust denial, denial and all this sort of thing is illegal, but the penalties, if you actually get into it, are pretty puny. I know here in Canada you can get convicted of Holocaust denial and um, never spend a, a moment in prison and um, never actually pay much of a fine. Uh, it's more of a slap on the wrist. Now, having said that, in Canada, getting convicted publicly of a crime is uh, enough to scare most people out of doing something. <laughs> but that's just a, more of a statement about how Canadians live in mortal dread of making a scene. But the penalties, if you ask me, uh, for hate crime and things like that are so, um, are so ridiculously uh, symbolic that I believe that they're actually there more as a way of allowing the government to wash their hands of an issue, to, to say, there, see, this person has uh, done something which we find offensive. We've convicted them of hate crimes, and now we don't have to do anything else. They're, they're convicted now. We, we, we've done everything that we can, due diligence, but the ideas, of course, are still being spread all over the place, especially now that we have the Internet. Um, it's just a way of politicians to escape any responsibility for anything concerning that issue simply because it's too hot to handle. You can't really do anything about people uh, publishing these sorts of things, so you go through the motions of convicting someone of hate crime, which I think in most countries is a pretty ridiculously castrated sort of legal process where there's really no serious penalties other than you're pointed and said that you're pointed at and said ah you're a hate criminal the, it doesn't really amount to much um, and there's no appetite to make it amount to much we can always say we'll just make you know we'll give somebody uh, 40 years for Holocaust denial or something like that and <laughs> then watch what happens <clears throat> um, so we have uh, a kind of a paradoxical situation here in which um, a society which has simply never bothered to equip itself for challenges to the way, the, the predominant way of thinking, i.e. you can't say certain things and that's the end of it. We won't even entertain any challenges to this. You say these certain things or publish these certain things and um, you get censored. One way or another you go to jail or whatever. You get censored. You, you, we shut down your newspaper, your TV station, uh, revoke your license, whatever. Um, okay, now you can't do that anymore. What do you do? 
well, they hadn't thought this through. They hadn't anticipated what would happen now that the Internet has come along and anybody can essentially publish anything. Look what's out there in the way of illegal pornography. It's going to get out there. And there's nothing we can do about it except not click on the link that allows us to watch this stuff. Um, and when you add to that the fact that uh, Islamic leaders or leaders in Islamic countries are asking the West or the UN or whoever to come up with hate crime laws to deal with things that they perceive as Islamophobic, one gets the impression that Islamic governments or governments in the Islamic world understand that what they're doing is pointless. They're doing the same thing. They're playing the same cynical game as get, gets played here in the West. Um, hand this over to the courts. We've done our due diligence as the government and there's nothing else we can do. So the raging mobs that are attacking our embassies can continue to attack our embassies or attack U.S. embassies or whoever, Western embassies. But we as the governments in these countries have done everything that we can to prevent this, even though we know that it's pointless. The end result is, um, and nothing happens if you ask me, even if we do pass such laws. Even if we do uh, pass laws restricting um, people's ability to criticize Islam or however you want to phrase such laws. The stuff, the offensive stuff is going to get out. There's no way around it. And the only thing that I can say is the sooner that the public, the people in the Islamic world who uh, are rioting or who are offended or who are shocked about this, the sooner they get used to this fact, the better for everybody. I don't think that there really is anything anyone can do to prevent um, people from publishing things which are going to be offensive to religious sensibilities. I don't think that that's really going to be possible. And in a sense, I can understand how a dialogue is absolutely central to this, to at least gain time and at least... Uh, build bridges and say to people, okay, regardless of what our laws say, our laws are toothless and our laws are not going to allow us uh, realistically to stop people from um, from doing these sorts of things. Um, every country has laws that are difficult to enforce and there are laws that are difficult to enforce or, who, or that are ignored even in the strictestly governed countries. Um, the, the law can only do what the law can do. With the technology that's available now, people are going to publish whatever they want, and they're going to get away with it, and there's nothing anyone can do. The sooner we all get used to that fact, the better. If someone actually can come up with a, a feasible way in which we can censor out things that are inconvenient uh, without damaging our, um, our culture of human rights, I'd be more than interested, uh, more than willing to entertain the ideas. But I think I can come up with just about, uh, just off the top of my head, at least uh, oh, a few thousand objections to uh, censorship laws and why they will damage our culture of, uh, of human rights and, uh, and freedoms. Um, and I can also think of a thousand objections, a thousand uh, uh, ways in which such laws can be easily violated at the click of a mouse. The only way out of this situation in which we find ourselves is for everyone to get used to the fact that there's going to be stuff out there that we don't want to see published. It's going to get published. Don't click on the little gray play button. Thank you.